Hi, welcome to an amazing time to start your journey in technology. This is for the Aspiration Digital event. And let's start by asking three simple questions. If you had to ask yourself, do you think you're going to use technology to change the world? Do you think it's going to be something that you're going to use or you see yourself using to make a real difference in the world? Or are you just excited by a career in technology? Are you looking forward to getting hold of those tools and the tools that might come uh, in the future? Or are you in the camp of you just don't think there's any jobs left thanks to AI and machines taking over everything and not leaving you with anything? So, yeah, strange way to start, but three interesting questions that are quite common when we start talking about the future of technology. My name is Matt Webb. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Lab Group. I'm very lucky to, first of all, be presenting today, but also uh, that I've had this kind of interesting career of managing to span from fairly kind of global roles, uh, from senior senior positions. I've built tech teams and technology projects all over the world. I have a degree in cybernetics and AI from Reading University, um, and I consider myself a maker, mentor, lecturer type. Um, it says there, I hate technology for tech's sake, and that is absolutely true. Um, I'm here presenting because hopefully I can share some of the things that I've learned from speaking to people like yourselves on my journey through technology, but also uh, from some of the feedback I've had around connecting with the younger generation on their starts and their careers in technology. So the consistent theme here is always technology is always on the move. There's so much around you. It's so hard to keep track. And with everything, all the tech being in your face and presented to you the whole time, sometimes you sort of get lost and feel like, well, it's just an impossible task to keep ahead of what there is. But in fact, a recent student at Reading University said, I've tried to learn and understand. I tried to keep up with all the change and all the new information. But in the end, I just took a nap. So that's Mira at Reading University, third year student, absolutely typical of information overload couldn't see really the options out in front of her because she's just bombarded the whole time with the technology that's in front of her and i do mean directly in front i mean you're surrounded by facebook instagram TikTok, snapchat all the kind of social channels all the time all of your social engagements educational engagements and your new kind of work engagements they're all kind of a technology overload particularly in the first kind of few weeks of each of those journeys um, then you see the news and the news has got, constantly got a lot of, of technology in it and then you hear of a new invention that, that that crops up and you never really get to sort of see everything in detail because as soon as you delve into the detail you realize that's even more so it is it's pretty daunting and and I think I'm here to tell you that there is a different lens on this there is another way of looking at it and one is the title of this talk which is it's an amazing time right now to be in technology the other is the career paths that you have open to you are incredible the ways that you businesses and huge industries have changed the way that they work in order to kind of meet those demands and meet those kind of different ways of working is really really important um and then obviously the technology itself has changed so uh the, the the tools that we use now are very different but also the perception of how we use those tools and that's just something i'm going to come on to obviously my caveat here is i haven't got a chance in the small sort of window of time to tell you about all of the various options and all the different ways of working and all the different kind of industries and i certainly haven't got time to tell you about all the different technologies but hopefully i can give you a flavor on how you can investigate for yourself so let's start First one, the number of career paths and options open to you today is really, really incredible. So the, what I mean by that is if you look back in the past and you look at, you know, we've all seen these diagrams that we've got, got here and you see, you look back at your own past and you see this as this kind of linear journey that you've been through your life. And, you know, you're all young and, you know, ready to take on the rest of your lives. But really, even up until now, you've already made some choices and you've maybe dropped a subject or you've chosen to go and do something else or learn something else in your own time or chosen a particular job. One of the things that you can always do is you can look back at that and go, well, actually, it wasn't that linear. But also, I don't have to continue on this linear path. If you want to pick up one of those subjects later on in life or learn a technology or learn a skill or connect with somebody else that you maybe lost touch with, that you might be able to cross paths with that person again. The, the lines are not necessarily as closed as this diagram makes out. What's really interesting, though, is if we put a technology lens on this, then we see a massive amount of options available to you at any one moment in time. But also the loop back. There's not often in technology a lot of paths that are closed to you. 
to give you some context, this was my uh, massive amount of choice as I came out of university. Um, and I, I will say this was 1999, which is a very long time ago, I appreciate. But in 1999, I wanted to be a developer. I'd gone from being wanting to be an electrical and electronic engineer to I want to be a developer. And really, these were the four things in front of me. So go and learn how to be a game developer and learn how to make cool graphics. Go and be a specialist software house. So um, learn a very particular set of coding skills so that you could apply that particular set of coding skills to many different people. Go and get interested in this interesting world of websites and the internet or go into a particular vertical. So go and be a financial services developer or a healthcare developer, do that type of thing where you have to learn many different skills, but particularly in one industry. They were my kind of four routes that I had presented to me. I'm sure there were more, but they were the four main ones at the time. You can probably guess by what you've seen about my background is I chose the website developer route and chose to build a company and go around the world. 10 years after starting my career in technology, um, it was in website technology. And I'm just going to pick on marketing technology now because it's the one that we're probably all most familiar with. It's the one that we all say, I'm used to this particular way of interacting on social media. I understand the concept of being marketed to. I understand that I need to buy stuff on the internet. And there's probably a mechanism behind that that enables that whole service. So 10 years after starting my career in learning how to build websites and learning how to work with industries, financial services, healthcare, et cetera. Um, I, I think there was this kind of amazing moment when people started to realize that you could group these technologies together by not only by the, the, the capability that they had, but the industry that they served. So there was this thing called the MarTech landscape. So this is a, you know, 2011 when this is really a, a, an amazing kind of world to say, well, actually each one of these was a skill that was available to me, available to me. Uh, and actually a lot of my peers in the kind of development and technology space who, uh, sorry, not development, but in the technology space were realizing that they could do loads of jobs in and around this world. So you could learn how to write content. You could learn how to be a content management system editor. You could learn how to do press releases. You could learn how to do the connections behind all of these things if you want to get deep into the technology. So it opened a lot of our eyes in terms of the, the amazing kind of landscape that was there. Now, roll forward. This is the 2022, same, same idea, same map. The logos are so small on here, you can't see them. Each one in itself is a huge company. Each one in itself is a um, uh, an industry, a way of solving a problem. It has peers, it has competitors, it's underpinning lots of the technology we use in the world. And we're talking about 9,900 of these, right? So I'm not necessarily, excuse me, it's, I'm not necessarily suggesting that um, each one of these is a job in its own. I'm saying that all of these intertwine, they all offer something slightly different. They are all rooted around particular industries, verticals, or technologies. And they were all, they've all come about in the last 10 years. Even more so since 2020 to 2022, 2022 there's been a 24% growth in this marketing technology landscape. So anybody that comes to you and says, oh, back in my day, you know, we all had these set job options and there was always work for us. And they look and say, well, I can't get a job out of university and it's so hard to get a job. They're looking at it the wrong way. They're not saying, look at the amazing amount of options I've got in front of me. Maybe if you can't get a particular job, you're looking in too, too narrow a field. Maybe you're not looking at doing different things with the skills that you've learned in your kind of academia. So just a really important point. The last two or three years have seen this massive growth in this space. Now, obviously, I know I'm talking about marketing technology. So that's the thing that we refer to. It's one of the biggest industries. It's all around the Internet. It's everything you see, do, look at, be tracked by, search engine optimized, you name it. It's, it's marketing technology. However, there are also other equally large industry so legal tech is a huge industry massively revolutionizing the way that we work it's heavily tied to financial technology so fintech league tech reg tech martech you'll hear these terms they're all these huge industries in themselves when we look at 
other areas you think well actually is it just those big three and you think, well no there's healthcare and med tech there's logistics tech but there's also mobility tech there's real estate to energy tech we've got manufacturing we've got hr we've got you know you know i can keep going food tech marine tech charity tech we've even got defense and reg tech as i've mentioned so you've got this amazing world and if you look at each of these industries each of them have this kind of catalog of all the technologies and services and tools and things that you can do some of them are really deep technology some of them are just applying the technology it is a massive massive space right now and i can assure you that each one of these things existed 10 15 20 years ago however the technology and the availability of the technology jobs around them wasn't as prolific there wasn't as many options so let's just set this up. That's the kind of the technology and the industries, right? So let's look at the actual companies and the way that they work. Let's look at that just for a quick second. So apologies if anybody's seen this diagram before. It's been doing the circuit for a long, long, long time. And it is great. And I do, I do think it is a fantastic kind of way of looking at things. So if you look at mo most of the main technologies, you look at how long it takes them to get to 80% in the Western world. You look at something like the phone or the car, you're talking about 60 or 70 years to get into the mainstream. And that's a hell of a long time. Whereas if you move forward to the PC era, you're talking, you know, within 20 years gets into mainstream. Internet comes along. That only takes 11, 12 years to get into the mainstream. Smartphone comes along six years and it gets to 80% in the Western world. So you've got to think of all of these amazing technologies we're hearing about now, they've all got a much steeper kind of slope getting into the kind of mainstream. So I know that there's more of them, but the ones that stick grow massively. But that isn't the point of this diagram. The point is the way that businesses have had to adopt, the way that they've had to work, excuse me, the way that they've had to kind of change the way they do things. So if you look back at the earlier part of that diagram with stoves and the onset of electricity, you're talking about moving from kind of this huge mechanized world into how can we produce that stuff? How can we apply a bit of science to produce more of that stuff? Then we get into the kind of digital era and we start to say, well, actually, how can we produce more of that stuff and market that stuff? And then how can we make it more intelligent and connected in the world that we're in now? And actually what that's done is it's changed the way that businesses have to work. So the options available to you now are not only great and far, uh, far flung, they're also uh, run by companies who see collaboration as a much more valuable resource and way of working. They, they want to get away from this command and control. There are still businesses that operate in command and control, this more mechanistic way of running. But you'll find in the last five years especially in the last you know i'm so, sorry to use covid as an example but many businesses who were lagging behind have realized that you cannot work in this way of make more stuff command and control hierarchical it doesn't work so a lot of businesses have moved into this much more collaborative environment and it's just a great time to be in in any job that's in that collaboration space but it's made especially better in digital because digital by nature of what it is is collaborative I will also say the companies and industries and even the giants themselves that open to conversations that they were never open to before. And these not even necessarily sit with technology, but gender bias, climate change, environmental sustainability, gender neutral, all of the conversations that used to be a little bit tricky to have, they're now open, they're out on the table. They're not fixed. They're not, we're not there yet, but they're definitely, if you take the way businesses work, it's a much nicer time to start and don't let anybody tell you that let them apply don't let any older generation apply how they started out in their careers as a kind of blueprint for what is good because it's always evolving the last thing i'll say on this slide is just um excuse me so sorry the last thing i'll say on that slide was um when we talk about um, when you go into your career, you don't expect to change everything all the time and have those questions all the time. Uh, sorry about the lag on my screen there. Um, it does mean that you can create groups of people who can talk and collaborate. And, and another thing that digital has brought is people who weren't often, who didn't often have a voice, often have a voice now. So I've run an awful lot of workshops with lots of different groups of people in lots of different parts of the world, sometimes spread across the world. And with the onset of online um, workshops, online kind of whiteboarding sessions, I've definitely seen that sh a really positive shift towards more people being able to speak, more people being able to have a voice, 
Whereas in a boardroom, they might not feel that comfortable. So it's just another advantage you can kind of leverage. Sorry. So we get here. The, the, the third one, the technology itself. So just a really quick kind of glance. As I've said before, I cannot go through every area of all the cool stuff and all of the stuff that's just improved because just in general, there are there are prescribed laws for how technology moves on. It's worth looking at. They're all amazing. Everything's amazing. So let's just pick a couple. First one, if I look at this image, I know exactly who it is, but it is not a photograph. This was drawn 10 years ago by somebody's finger on an iPad. Why is it in this presentation? One, because it's still cool. Two, because it's worth reminding you that that amazing isn't just something that's just happened to us now. There's always been a moment in technology, a moment in time in technology, where amazing was happening. And we've been amazed by things over the years. And what we're seeing, uh, especially when you look at kind of in, in the gaming industries and in the even fintech industries, we've seen technologies come about over the last few years that are building on amazing stuff that's happened before. So one of the one of the bits of feedback i get from some some of the younger generations is they hear their parents talk about the first time they saw an image on the internet or the first time they played an 8 bit computer game and there's this there's this amazement this wonder that that kind of the older generation talk about myself included but if you look and you you're aware of all of the change around you there's some amazing things happening now and this was a good example 10 years ago ai was already on the scene virtual reality was already on the scene um, augmented reality was already there. There's all sorts of things that were already there. But this is just one of those moments just to remind you that the technology catches up to the expectation of what people wanted to be able to do with the technology in the first place. And we're just in a place now where that's growing hugely and there's more applications of that technology. I'll stop nerding out about that now because I just really love that. But we are in a world now where you've got incredible advances in healthcare you've got incredible ha um, advances in mach machine to human interactive and, and haptics anybody who's into gaming will have seen this just completely explode over the last kind of five or six years education has been massively shifted by the way that we teach the 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 onset of places in the metaverse like decentraland and somnium space where you can go and collaborate and interact with people in a way that you used to only think was available through console gaming you know for goodness sake we've still got creepy robots with ai backing and they look a bit too uh, realistic and you're still not quite sure of them but you know at the end of the day we've got we've now in a world where we've got toasters with screens on the world is amazing just said I'd pick on a couple of technologies or, or a particular kind of trend at the moment. It's too hard to do a talk like this without touching on some of the things that you've probably seen in the news with regards to AI and chat GPT-3 and now chat GPT-4, uh, the models. So these are huge language models. They're essentially just scraping up all of the language that they can find on the internet, categorizing it and classifying it and surfacing it hopefully in what's relevant to the user that's asking questions. So if you haven't played with ChatGPT4, please go along and have a go. If you're not comfortable just logging into a system like that and asking it in a way that you would ask Google something, at least have a look at some of these tools. So here's, here's a couple of examples that are based on that kind of same, same models. So um, turning text into videos, so you just describe what you want to see. Uh, and it kind of and it will create you these kind of videos and voices, uh, create your own designs and logos by typing in what you think you need from a brand, building a website in 30 seconds you can do now. I didn't believe I actually did it just to kind of test for this demo. Durable is a really interesting punch out what you need. It generates all of the code, most of the content, pulls in all the things that it thinks you're going to need. And it's a great kind of baseline. Uh, virtual assistants where they can not only help you with the content, they can help manage your diary. All of these things, they're here now. So from a kind of a business objective, these are these are tools that can speed up the way that we would have historically done things manually. Uh, tools to do jobs and just, you know, help help with your general life. Just again, a handful, auto draw, bit of fun, but it's an AI model that's learning how what scribbles actually mean. So my version of scribbling out a bike might be very different to an artist's version of scribbling out a bike. 
um, this thing is learning all of that kind of fast drawing and it's and the more you use it the more it trains so essentially we've got a whole list of draw a whole load of drawings that have just appeared through an ai model if you get stuck on a, an excel formula or you're trying to build a spreadsheet there's an ai bot that can help you to try and work out what you're trying to do there's things that you can do a, a really great one explain like i'm five if you've if you've got any subjects that you're really struggling to understand i strongly recommend you use this service it will literally talk to you and it's like a fifth grader uh, explain like i'm five is a great service for explaining really complex things you want to learn about string theory this thing can teach you and it can it talks to you like it's five you don't feel patronized because ultimately it's a robot at the other end of it this is just a thin sample of things that you can do now that you couldn't do three years ago there's obviously the fun side of it as well which i you know it's fun and uh, entertainment side let's say so obviously you've probably seen all of the ai generated imagery right now i punched in two aliens fighting jiu-jitsu questionable stances but still they it's still two aliens fighting right um this idea of this uh making presentations this idea of creating um songs um through just kind of generation of putting in the prompts that you think but without the need for a full studio all of these things are uh you probably consider them cheats but they're just tools to enable you to pull the content together the one i really love is talk to books so you really want to you're not really sure about bookstores you go in you, you know you don't know the names of the authors that you like you know what type you know the genre but you're not really that clued up on whether you're going to really love a book or, or hate a book based on its cover so talk to books you can describe what you want from a book i'd like something that's calming i'd like something with castles i'd like something that talks a little bit about science but i don't want space you know you can talk to it talk to books and it will refer books to you based on your a natural language way of working so these are all amazing things that just didn't exist before one of the things that people get hung up on though is are they are they cheating right are they you've probably seen in the news there's um there are the antithesis of these which is can you tell if an ai has done this so can you tell if an AI, a, a, a student has cheated on a paper um I think the thing for me is just just to keep in mind they are just tools right these things are no different to when i went to school with a scientific calculator and my grandpa told me that was cheating right they're just tools right so as long as you're not um getting them to read the question come up with the answer and then put it out verbatim uh because then you're not involved in the process if you're using them as a tool you them to gather information use them to piece structures together question whether that is the tone that you want to get across question if that's the right kind of tool to be even using in the first place these are just use them as a way of doing whatever you do normally and do it faster i talked a little bit uh, a while ago about the fact that we've outsourced most of our knowledge to google right so nobody really tries to remember the third monarch of a particular country because you don't really need to remember it you know it's it's there on the internet i'll just google it i'll go to wikipedia this is sort of feels like very much the same type of thing there is that question that if we've already outsourced all of our knowledge to google how much of ourselves are we outsourcing to ai i have a personal opinion on that which is I really hope it's all the mundane stuff that would take ages so when i'm looking through google trying to find a information on a particular topic or code or software it would be great if the ai could just go and scrape all that and pull it and pull it up and give me all the information and guess what it can so just to wrap up i asked uh chat gpt3 what should i tell 16 to 9 year olds about technology you are pleased to know it's fairly positive it was constantly evolving both advantages and disadvantages it gave me this whole shtick as you can see on on the right here sort of six key points but i said oh, it's a bit much i don't want to read that much i said can you give me a, a more abbreviated version and it did it didn't just cut out some words it actually rewrote it and made it the, the sentence st structure very logical so i thought right well, i'm getting to the end of my presentation now so i need to wrap this up so i said could you do you mind writing me a poem and it did so i'm going to end with a poem and it says technology is always changing never still new devices software platforms we fulfill it has pros but also cons to deal so use it wisely be aware and heal digital literacy is a skill you'll need for success to better succeed learn to navigate the online space be safe responsible leave no trace Tech can bring people together, it's true. Raise awareness, empower, and renew. 
but too much can be addictive, it's said. Find balance offline, clear your head. The future of technology is bright. Self-driving cars, VR, what a sight. Opportunities for those with tech passion, innovators, creators, a new generation. Thank you very much.